What's up, my brothers? We got a requested video today from a guy who wants some help trying to deal with uh, guys he feels are touching his girlfriend inappropriately. Uh, so the subject line is, how do I handle guys that hit on my girlfriend or touch her, them, inappropriately? So I gather they're touching her or she is touching them inappropriately by your subject. So Let's get right into this. He says, uh, hey Rich, uh, how do I handle guys that hit on my girlfriend or touch her, them inappropriately? I have a lot of questions about this with some examples, scenarios, and past experiences. I would like to navigate this part of my life better so I do not second guess myself or keep my manhood intact. This will be a good one. Uh, I'm sure this will help a lot of uh, guys out there even if they're older or newer to my channel. So background, uh, US, mid 30s, average shape, medium build boyish face rate myself five out of ten but studied pua for 10 years notice of priorities due to this i've dated a lot of sevens and eights in my life so far all right let's deal with that part first uh i can tell whenever a guy asks this question he's usually coming from a place of scarcity and doesn't have the highest opinion of himself um I talk about looks, money, status in my book. Uh, there's probably another chapter or two that's also dedicated to uh, gauging genuine desire and improving your, uh, you know, the optics of masculinity and of course doing better with women in and around that. So a lot of the times when I'm talking to guys on coaching and they book my time and they're like, look, I'm really struggling with women. So this would be a good example of it. I'll often ask them on a scale of one to 10 with 10 being the best version of themselves, one being the worst, where do you place yourself? And most guys surprisingly are like, I'm a four, five, or six. So this guy's a five. He's saying that he's a five. He could he could be a lot better is what he's saying. Uh, average looks, average build. He's rating himself five out of 10. Now, interestingly, most guys underrate themselves and, do, and women overrate themselves. So when a guy says he's a five, he's probably a six. When a chick says that she's a six, she's probably a five, just so that's clear. Um, so the first thing that you can probably start doing is invest in yourself. I mean, the ROI is the highest in that area, uh, not just for this one girl that you're dealing with, anyone else that you deal with on a future basis, but you're going to have a lot more options. You're going to be spoiled for choice and you're going to have a better opinion of yourself and more confidence if you're better. So the five out of 10 thing bothers me in my view, and I cover it in the book because we know women's swiping habits on dating apps a, a 3 out of 10 chick will only swipe right on an 8 out of 10 or better man. So if you're a 5 out of 10 dude, you're, you're, you're going to struggle with women. And I'll tell you right now, if you're going to use dating apps, you're going to have a very, very hard time. And I cover all those details in one specific chapter on using online dating in the book. Uh, Unplugged Alpha, it's available on Amazon. Grab it. It's pinned in the top comment. I know most of you guys have grabbed a copy by now. If you haven't, it's a good read. I think it's on sale for less than 10 bucks on uh, Kindle right now. Um, so dated a lot of sevens and eights unusual for a guy that's a five to date a seven or eight because of hypergamy women only date across socioeconomic scales and up. So for you to say that you're only dating sevens and eights, I'm betting that you're at least a six or a seven minimum. Okay. So again, you're undervaluing yourself. Is there room for improvement? Obviously, right? I mean, you've made it clear. So your questions are number one, what if the neighbor is hitting on her daily? Do I confront him gentleman-like or do I come off with pissed off aggression and threaten him? My view is neither, okay? Your woman's gonna get hit on. If your woman's hot, she's gonna get hit on regardless. If she's going to the gas station, she's going to the grocery store, library, whatever, the gym, yoga studio, guys will hit on her. So whether it's your neighbor or some random dude at the gas station you don't know about, it's just that you know her neighbor's doing it so it's pissing you off. So. You got to understand attractive women will get hit on even sevens and eights or sixes will even get hit on. There's a lot of fives that'll get hit on. So my view is do nothing. Okay. You don't confront him. That's a beta like behavior. What are you going to say? Hey man, stop hitting on my girl. Uh, or, or what are you going to, you're going to show up with him all like puffy chested beating on your chest and, and threaten him with physical violence because he's talking to your girlfriend. You do neither. Absolute neither. The only reason why you're worried about this is because you don't have a lot of confidence yourself. If you had confidence in yourself and you had options on a sexual marketplace and you knew for a fact that your woman woke up every single morning thinking to herself, this guy is the best I can possibly do. I am going to behave. I'm not going to talk to neighbor dude because this guy is the best I can possibly do. Wouldn't even cross your mind. Okay. Uh, I know my chick gets hit, hit on by other dudes all the time. 
doesn't bother me. I don't concern myself with it because I know that I'm the best that she can do. And if she decides that I'm no longer the best and she wants to bounce, fine. I'll just find somebody else or others or many others, whatever. It doesn't matter. You have to approach life from a mental point of origin, thinking to yourself, this stuff is not even something that you should concern yourself with. It's not worth your energy is basically what I'm saying. Let's go to number two. When should I ever get physical or get a police restraining order? For what exactly here? Are we talking about getting a police restraining order for your neighbor? Are you talking about getting physical towards your neighbor because he's hitting on your girlfriend? <laughs> um, that's, I get a little worried when I, t you know, when I see stuff like that. Um, you need to update your beliefs. If you haven't read my book, get it. Please just read it. It's, it's, it's going to explain all of this for you. Uh, number three, it says, in the past, men have laughed at me when not taking my aggression or threats seriously. Okay, interesting. This is this probably made myself look weaker and embolden them to continue. What do I do about that? Lift heavy weight. Yeah, dude. Masculine male frame is what you need. <laughs> um, you linked below to your LinkedIn, not to any other social media. So I can only judge your looks by... Uh, like shoulder height above. And um, I know, I mean, your name's obviously not mentioned, so I can say this based on the image that I saw. I know that you're not a strong looking masculine dude. You're in a field in medicine that's uh, mostly female dominated from from what I can gather from my own, from my own experiences whenever I've uh, crossed paths with people in that space. So this, like all the stuff you're talking about here with aggression and threats and, you know, calling the police and restraining orders. My view is you don't care about any of that stuff when you're making yourself your own mental point of origin, when you are the best version of yourself, when you've got a masculine, strong male frame with a nice V taper. You don't need to be a bodybuilder covered in, you know, slabs of muscle. And don't be a scrawny guy that looks like they do endurance running for 50 miles at a time. Think of a uh, swimmer's body, okay, like Michael Phelps. That's what you want to develop. So if you're not going to the gym and lifting weights, if you're not engaged in something at a jiu-jitsu uh, dojo, Krav Maga dojo, boxing dojo, something where you can learn striking skills, um, you know, the ability for, or, or sorry, the capacity for violence. See, women love men that are civil with a capacity for violence. Okay, so let me explain it to you. Your woman would appreciate you more if you could have the capacity for le for lethality, but do not rely upon it. You only rely, rely upon it when it comes to something for self-defense to protect her or your family. The zombie apocalypse comes. You get the idea, right? Obviously, I'm kind of running up the flagpole a little bit. But all of this stuff over here, you're leaning into a very beta, weakened, scarcity sort of mindset. And that's not the right way to go about it. So all three of these here, I don't have a very good... Uh, uh, amount of feedback for you on that one. But let's carry on because you got a few more questions. So number four, how do I handle a waiter or a random comment that hits on my girlfriend when I'm out on a date with her? Dude, I'm guessing you don't have a very high notch count or a lot of experience with women the way that you're asking these questions because again, your chick's going to get hit on if she's even remotely attractive. Five get, fives get hit on, okay? Um, if the waiter or a random comment from a guy that's like, hey, you know, your you know, your girlfriend looks beautiful today, then your response should be, yeah, she's lucky to have me. Not, you know, how do I respond? Do I get a police restraining order? How do I deal with a neighbor or any of that shit? You know, the waiter hits on your girlfriend, the doctor hits on your girlfriend at uh, you know, the medical facility, the receptionist hits on your girlfriend, the guy at the gas station, whatever. Anybody hits on your girlfriend, you're like, oh, she looks beautiful today, or you know. Bill, you know, your girlfriend looks hot in that outfit or whatever. She's so pretty, you know, you're lucky to whatever. It's like, no, she's lucky to have me, okay? That's the approach that you should take and that's the response that you should take towards it. Uh, I guess if someone grabbed her bum at the bar and she told me, it is my duty to go up to him and punch him in the face? Uh, no. <laughs> First of all, what is she doing in a bar if you're in a relationship with this chick? Uh, like, girlfriends with boyfriends don't go out to nightclubs and bars. Okay. I cover this in my book again. Re please read my book. Uh, Unplugged Alpha, Amazon, dig dig through it. This is this is not something that should be happening. Women that are going to bars and nightclubs when they're in a relationship with a guy are actively marketing themselves to other dudes. 
It's not something that you should permit. And it's not something you go into a beta space. It's like, you're not allowed to go out anywhere with that. Or nothing like that. It's like, you just straight up tell her, like, girlfriends with boyfriends don't go out to nightclubs and bars. And if she continues to go out, then she's basically told you that she wants to market herself to other dudes. That means you go out, start spinning some plates, okay? It's as simple as that. You don't go into, like, this scarcity sort of weaky mindset where you're like, how do I handle that? Do I punch him in the face? Any of that stuff. You're... You're basically going about it from the wrong angle in almost all these questions so far. Number five, what about a man that physically touches her at work? Okay, are we talking about, you know, she's sitting down and guy comes around behind her and says, hey, Jill, I want to talk to you about, you know, the women's report and your Excel spreadsheet and all that sort of thing. Come, you know, come see me in my office when we're done. Fine, whatever. But if Kevin from sales is trying to bend her over her desk after work and have his way with her, then yeah, you got a problem, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> you, you got more than a problem then obviously, right? So again, this stuff should not be bothering you if you're the highest value, the you know, the best version of yourself. What about a guy that physically beat him up or go to HR and get him fired? What are we talking about here? Like, do you work with this chick? You know, are you talking about going to the HR department and saying, Bill touched Jill's shoulder, you should fire him? Wrong way to go about it, dude. This is this is beta scarcity mindset. Unplug from this crap. I guess it depends on where he touches her. In the past, it ranged from unwar unwarranted hair playing, back caresses, weird hugs, kiss grab to an ass grab. I know something like showing up at her job would embarrass a woman. I get, I get the feeling this chick's banging somebody else already. I get the feeling that you're beta bucks and she's got an alpha seed somewhere else. Uh, and you're really worried about all this stuff because your spidey senses are are, are tingling. Um, your ROI here is not on beating guys up, going to HR, filing police re restraining orders, going to the neighbors. Your ROI is on unplugging from the bullcrap lies that you've been told your entire life and plugging into some uncomfortable truths about attraction, arousal, and desire. And the biggest problem that you have is that you're is that you're weighing yourself low on the sexual marketplace value scale simply because you have a lot of room for improvement, but I'm not sure why you don't want to do that work, right? Number six, should I stay with a woman that lets herself get sexually assaulted and she does and says nothing because she is too afraid? Is that worth the stress? I know men who are dominant initiate physical touch for rapport. Should I stay with a woman that lets herself, why would she let herself get sexually assaulted? I'm not, I'm not clear on that. Why would she let her, why would she let that happen? Uh, if she's letting it happen, it's because she wants it to happen. Okay, so um, her actions speak louder than her words. If she's like, I got sexually assaulted and I let it happen, but you know, what was I supposed to do? Uh, what she's really saying is that she liked it and she didn't stop it and she's not going to complain or file up a, a police report. Um, it's, dude, like all of these questions here are, are just echoing the exact same thing to me, man. I imagine with any physically, sorry, physicality, I could end up getting arrested and losing my average shitty job. Well, that's another problem for you, okay? Hypergamy dates across and up on the socioeconomic scale. This is gonna, of course, be another problem for you. Make money, make muscles, make bank. You have to have some kind of purpose as a guy. Um, you don't have enough going on in your head, keeping you busy, putting a dent in the universe, which is why you're worrying about these small trivial things with this one chick, uh, or chances of future employment. I do plan on enrolling in a wing, wing chung soon. Okay. Good to talk about it. It's better to start doing it. Right. Uh, I think if I had my own online business, I'd feel better with confrontation, physical escalation and feel more confident. I do not have to worry about a criminal record then. I know well, <laughs> you don't want a criminal record period, dude. Like even if you have the ability for lethality for violence, it's it's not something that you rely upon unless it's last resort, okay? You're completely misunderstanding the point of violence. Having the capacity for violence is a last resort. It is a legitimate response when needed and when called upon, but not for anything that you've described here, right? A guy that's got lots of women spinning plates, you know, has lots of options on the sexual marketplace does not ask any of these questions at all. Uh, I never want to look like a coward and not protect stand up for my woman or woman that I love. Spin them plates. Thank you. All right. Well, my friend, um, I've, I've covered a lot in this video and, um, you, you do have a very strong scarcity mindset. Uh, you are plugged into comforting lies and beta conditioning that is not serving you. Um, my, 
entire book, The Unplugged Alpha, is really about unplugging from the lies and plugging into truths and getting better responses and reactions from women on the sexual marketplace and, and enjoying your experience as a guy uh, on a far better level. Your entire request just screams of insecurity and a very, very bad use of your time, effort, and, and resources. Uh, you, you would be far, far better off joining a dojo, learning some kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat skill, not to go beat up the neighbor, but so you feel confident and strong within yourself, having a gym membership, lifting weights so you can have a masculine V taper. You know, again, think swimmer's body, not bodybuilder, not scrawny runner. You want something that's more of a masculine v, v taper and get rid of the scarcity mindset that you have around women, beating up neighbors, going to HR, getting people fired, you know, losing your job, having a criminal record. All of this stuff is all bad news bear stuff. Get away from it all, my brother. Anyway, I hope this helps and shed some light on it for you. Uh, this will hopefully help some other guys. I bet there's guys watching this right now that was like, yeah, I was once like that, and here's what I did. Comment below, dudes. You know, Smash the like button, comment below. Let this guy know what you think. Uh, pinned in the top comment is links for my book, The Unplugged Alpha. Uh, again, it's available on Amazon. You can get it in a Kindle. It's on sale right now. Uh, it is the No Bullshit Guide to Women with Women and Life. Great read, 200 pages. You can rip through it in one day or less, and it's very, very easy to understand it all. Uh, you want to book me for coaching, make video requests, join my community. All this stuff's pinned in the top comment. See you guys in the next video. Peace out.